The castle of Glanworth in North County Cork was built by a chieftain named Fleming, to whom on the invasion by the English the territory of Fermoy was assigned. By the year 1200 Sir William Fleming was the inheritor of the castle. Fleming's daughter, the beautiful Amy, was an only child. A powerful baron of the district was Sir William Condon. Condon, who wished to marry Amy, had received a most positive refusal to his proposal of marriage. Enraged at this refusal, Condon joined the other chieftains, O'Keefe and O'Cosgrave, and besieged the castle of Glanworth. He resolved to win by force that which was refused to him. During the attack, Sir William Fleming had dispatched a messenger to find Sir Richard de la Roche, whose trusty band of knights William expected would come and protect his castle. Let but de la Roche free my lands from that rabble, said Fleming, and the best reward which knighthood ever won is his. Fear not for me, father, said Amy. I shall pray for the coming of the brave knight you look for, and while I go to the chapel, you must go and appear on the walls while our enemies are at the gate. On this, Sir William Fleming then climbed up to the castle ramparts. The sun shone in a gleam of gold as a dense squadron of knights in complete armour streamed down the hill from Fermoy. Pennons fluttered in the air, steel-pointed spears flashed like a forest of fire, and the tread of their steeds was like the rumbling thunder. At the head of this band was Sir Richard de la Roche, and at his side an esquire bore his banner, with three roach fish painted on it. Meanwhile, Condon and his forces were busily awaiting the onset. The fierce Sir William Condon was seen driving furiously his coal-black steed along the lines of his troops, marshalling their battalions of foot and squadrons of horse to stop the approach of the forces of de la Roche. The long lances of the knights now appeared in menacing posture. The riders gave their horses the spur. The brazen trumpets sounded a charge. De la Roche to the rescue, was shouted. The besieging forces reeled at the shock as every lance found a victim. Then the squadrons of Condon advanced to the charge and a severe struggle ensued. The superior bearing and discipline of de la Roche's knights, however, prevailed over the undisciplined valour of Condon's army. Condon's cavalry fled after a stubborn conflict during which every eye in the castle was fixed on the battle plain in an agony of suspense. The troops at Della Roche found little difficulty in dispersing the infantry of Condon and his associates. These were not able to withstand the repeated and well-sustained charges of the male riders, against whose armour and well-defended steeds their arrows and javelins just fell powerless. Della Roche himself was to be seen wherever the battle raged, his sword forced a passage through the thickest ranks, dealing death in every blow. Close beneath the castle wall, Della Roche encountered Condon. While staying to chivalry, cried de la Roche, take now thy deserts, let no man interfere, while I give this plunderer his due. Proud youth, you shall rue your words, replied Condon. Let me each this knave to know how to fly, he said to his vassals. At the words of their respected leaders, both armies mutually stopped fighting to watch the combat between de la Roche and Condon. Their combat was long and desperate. Both knights were perfect masters of their weapons and fought with the resolve of men who stake life on the issue. Their horses fell dead under blows intended for the life's blood of the riders and then they fought on foot. Their spears were cast aside and then they fought with swords until the blades were broken to the hilts. Devoid of weapons, still they fought, striking each other with their gauntleted hands, then grappling, they strove to crush each other. Condon, by placing his foot behind de la Roche and taking advantage of the inequality of ground, flung him headlong a considerable distance, and a loud cheer burst from his men. In falling, de la Roche grasped at a weapon which lay beside a dead man. It was a crossbow with an arrow fitted to the string. He quickly turned the point towards Condon, whose armour was unloosened from the battle, and he discharged the weapon. The arrow passed through Condon's body, and with a loud shriek he fell to the ground a dead man. Upon the death of Condon, the scenes that followed included 
the joy and celebration of the victorious Della Roche Knights, the retreat of the defeated Condon army, and the festivities on the occasion of the wedding between the Lady Amy Fleming and Sir Richard Della Roche. Through his marriage to Amy, upon the death of Sir William Fleming, Richard de la Roche inherited the magnificent castle of Glanworth and a total of 6,900 acres of land in North Cork. The castle and land was passed down through the next 15 generations of the de la Roche family, whose surname was eventually shortened to Roach. The Roaches held Glanworth Castle until they took part in the 1641 Rebellion, where thereafter they lost their castles and the greater part of their estates to Sir Oliver Cromwell and the Parliamentarians. The ruins of the castle can still be seen in Glanworth County Cork to this day.